This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In central Gaza, generators at Al-Aqsa Hospital and Deir al-Balah have reportedly gone out. As the hospital warns, there's no fuel left to power generators, and without electricity, quote, all patients will be condemned to death, unquote. On Thursday, Al-Aqsa Hospital treated dozens of Palestinians injured in an Israeli shelling on a welfare ministry site. Twelve people were killed in that attack. Most of the bodies were burnt. More than 30 wounded arrived at this hospital. This hospital in a few hours will not be functioning because of the lack of fuel for the generator. Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital is the only one hospital that is functioning in central Gaza. In the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza, the last two hospitals still treating patients remain under a days-long Israeli siege. This comes as the Israeli military says the bodies of three hostages were recovered in the refugee camp. They're believed to have been killed in the October 7th attack, then brought into Gaza. In the south, Israeli ground forces continue to advance in Rafah, which has now been decimated, despite once being designated as a safe area. The U.N. warns over 900,000 Gazans, nearly half the population, has been forcibly displaced in the past few weeks and do not have access to shelter, food, water and other essentials. In diplomatic news, the Agence France Presse reports CIA chief William Burns is headed to Paris in hopes of reviving ceasefire talks. Meanwhile, the International Court of Justice is expected to rule shortly on South Africa's request to order a halt to Israel's assault on Rafah. A House panel held another hearing Thursday on student-Palestinian solidarity protests with the heads of Northwestern University, Rutgers and the University of California, Los Angeles, while Republican lawmakers again sought to amplify alleged anti-Semitism on campuses. Minnesota Congressmember Ilhan Omar questioned UCLA Chancellor Jean Block on failing to protect his students when a violent pro-Israeli mob, many of them outsiders, attack peaceful protesters. Because of your inaction, they acted on the intention and brutally attacked students you were responsible for. This happened in front of your eyes, on your campus, and it was live streamed for the whole world to see. So I would like to know if you are truly committed to keeping your students safe, how did you fail these students at many critical points where you could have intervened? So, thank you for the question, but I really re I'm sorry, but I reject the premise. Uh, these students. How do you camp, reject the premise? These Are these pictures lying? Can I Are these pictures? Are any of these people in jail? The mob attacked the pro-Palestinian students at the encampment with metal bars and two-by-fours. We'll have more on this hearing after headlines with Northwestern professor Steve Thrasher. As the hearing was unfolding in Capitol Hill, police in riot gear stormed UCLA's campus just after hundreds of students set up another encampment and took over a campus building. Meanwhile, in Massachusetts, over a thousand Harvard graduates walked out of their commencement ceremony Thursday. Many chanted, let them walk, in reference to the 13 students not allowed to graduate in retaliation for their involvement with campus protests. Speakers at the ceremony also addressed the issue. While these students may not leave with the degrees they rightfully earn, they will walk out of Harvard's gates with something far more important, a clear conscience and a proof of resolute commitment to humanity. Take courage from their steadfastness and honor their sacrifice by using your degree to speak out for the oppressed. In international news, German police detained at least 130 people after raiding a peaceful pro-Palestine occupation at Humboldt University in Berlin. Students are calling on the university to, quote, take an active role in ending the genocide against the people of Palestine and their decades-long suffering, unquote. 
President Biden said he'll designate Kenya as a non-NATO ally, as President William Ruto visited the White House Thursday. The largely symbolic title was announced as Kenya prepares to deploy its forces to Haiti as part of an international security mission. The U.S. has pledged to contribute money, logistical support and equipment. Biden justified the U.S. involvement in Haiti during a joint press conference with Kenyan President Ruto. Haiti is in a area of the Caribbean that is very volatile. There's a lot going on in this hemisphere, and we're in a situation where we want to do all we can without us looking like America once again is stepping over and deciding this is what must be done. Meanwhile, in Kenya, police are violently cracking down on environmental activists in the village of Ayumbo as they protest the construction of a nuclear reactor. At least three people were arrested on Tuesday. Last night, President Biden held a state dinner for Kenyan President Ruto. Among those who attended were two past presidents, Bill Clinton and President Obama, whose father was Kenyan. In Papua New Guinea, over 100 people are feared dead after a catastrophic landslide in the northern Enga province. Homes were flattened by rock, soil and trees after the side of a mountain collapsed. The search for survivors continues. The United Nations has approved a resolution declaring July 11th an International Day of Remembrance for the 1995 Srebrenica genocide. Some 8,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys were killed in the massacre after Bosnian Serb armed forces stormed the UN safe zone during the Balkan Wars, seen as the worst atrocity in Europe's history since World War II. The resolution was sponsored by Germany and Rwanda. Both Serbia and Bosnian Serbs have denied that genocide happened in Srebrenica. The resolution does say Serbs are responsible for the massacre. French President Emmanuel Macron described the recent upheaval in New Caledonia as a, quote, unprecedented insurrection movement as he visited the archipelago on Thursday. Macron said he would delay new reforms that would give voting rights to French residents of the territory, a move that the indigenous Kanak population argues will dilute their voice and their struggle for independence. This is French President Macron. Deuxièmement. Dès que les retraits seront effectifs et observés, this reform, although it's rejected by some here, which has fed the violence, it has democratic legitimacy. The bill proposed by the government has been voted with a clear majority, both in the National Assembly and the Senate. I say this as president. We don't just throw away popular sovereignty like a mere piece of paper. Back in the United States, the Supreme Court Thursday approved a South Carolina congressional map that a lower court previously ruled was racially gerrymandered and constituted a, quote, bleaching of African-American voters from a district. In a scathing dissent, Justice Elena Kagan wrote the decision will give state lawmakers, quote, an incentive to use race as a proxy to achieve partisan ends, she said. In abortion news, Louisiana's Republican-led legislature voted to classify abortion pills as controlled substances. Republican Governor Jeff Landry is expected to sign the measure into law, meaning the possession of abortion pills without a prescription could soon be a crime in Louisiana, with penalties including jail time and fines. Methapristone and misoprostol have been deemed safe by the FDA and do not lead to abuse or dependency, they have found. The drugs are also used for purposes other than abortion, which is already widely banned in Louisiana. This is Tyler Barberin with the Louisiana Abortion Fund. It's going to mean that detrimental things, and there are going to be very specific types of people that are circumstanced into carrying pregnancies that they don't consent to or did not want um, because of legislation like that, like this. And that, unfortunately, will most likely be poor um, Black communities um, that we represent and that we do our work to support. In related news, nearly 6,000 doctors have signed a letter urging the Supreme Court to uphold the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. The federal law protects the rights of pregnant people to get the emergency medical care they need. The National Collegiate Athletic Association and the five most powerful athletic conferences agreed to an historic $2.8 billion settlement, paving the way for college athletes to be directly compensated for the first time ever. The deal, which must still be approved by a judge, would provide back pay to athletes, as well as allow colleges to pay their players up to $20 million going forward.
Critics say the deal is flawed and risks creating gender-based pay inequalities and will disadvantage smaller conferences. The Justice Department, 29 states and District of Columbia sued Ticketmaster and its owner Live Nation for exercising a monopoly over the live entertainment ticket prices and crushing competition. The lawsuit is calling for Live Nation, which controls around 80 percent of major concert venues, to be broken up. Norfolk Southern will pay the government a $15 million fine for last year's derailment in East Palestine, Ohio which caused a massive explosion and the release of toxic chemicals. Norfolk Southern also agreed to spend $500 million to complete safety improvements and address health concerns in the affected communities. Last month, the company settled a $600 million class action settlement with East Palestine residents. EPA Administrator Michael Regan said the fine's the largest permitted under the Clean Water Act, but residents blasted it as a slap on the wrist. And Texas Congressmember Sheila Jackson Lee reintroduced the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act Thursday, two days ahead of the fourth anniversary of the police murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Despite the national uprising that followed George Floyd's killing, Congress has failed to pass the legislation named in Floyd's memory, which seeks to reduce racial profiling and the use of force by law enforcement. At least 1,247 people were killed by police last year, more than any previous year on record. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.